There's another metric associated with these uh, cycles. It's the mean effective pressure. So let's think about the auto cycle. It started large volume, low pressure. You went through a compression stroke and then constant volume heating from state two to state three. And then from state three back to state four, it was isentropic. So this is our cycle. And then we said the work net is this area enclosed, the net work for the cycle. So if you go one cycle, that's how many kilojoules per kilogram you would get out if this is specific volume. Well, they want a, a very simple approximation to that. About the simplest approximation to that cycle I can think of is a box. And you line the box up such that the volume at bottom dead center makes about the same as the volume at bottom dead center. And the volume at top dead center, top dead center, is about the same as the volume at top dead center. And you want the same enclosed area. You want the same work net. Well, what does that leave you? It leaves you with what is the, the pressure difference. And this is the mean effective pressure. So you can think of a couple ways. The mean effective pressure times, what is this difference in volume? That's my displacement volume, is equal to the net work. I could put it on a per unit mass basis, just make this a lowercase and a lowercase, right? But your equation for the mean effective pressure is the work net for the cycle divided by the displacement volume. It's just another metric. It's like a back work ratio. It's like a thermal efficiency. It's just something where, oh, it's for this cycle, it's this big. And so some of the problems in our textbook, some of them in homework, some of them in the exam that you may have, uh, will ask you to compute that metric. It's pretty easy to compute. Some students struggle with what does it mean? This is the best explanation I'm, I'm able to give.